Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Bell, and we want to say we thank the Lord for this opportunity to come before you and share what thus said the Lord on this beautiful Sunday morning in Jesus' name. Everybody, amen. You ought to get your family, get your children, get your Bible, get, amen, get excited because we are getting ready to share, amen, a moment, amen, with, with each other in Jesus' name. We thank the Lord for this privilege and for this opportunity to be able to come into your homes and to fellowship with you. Thank you for the privilege and opportunity to be able, amen, to just spend some time with one another and have something positive to go on. With all the negativity that's going around, with all of the negative things that's going on on the news, amen, we need some good news. And we got some good news for you this morning in Jesus' name. We're very grateful for the opportunity to be able to come into your homes in Jesus' name. We're very grateful that God has blessed you. I know you're blessed because you're hearing me. I know you're blessed because you're seeing, you see me. And I thank God in Jesus' name that he's blessed all of us to share this time together in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, it's been an awesome week in the Lord in Jesus' name. God is good to us. Somebody say God is good. Somebody just say God is good and give him a praise for being good to you. You got a lot of reasons to thank God. You got a lot of reasons to give God praise, to give God glory, and to give God honor this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go further, before we get started in Jesus' name, uh, we would like to take an opportunity to have a word of prayer with you. In Jesus' name, the Bible declares to us that men ought to always pray and not to faint. In Jesus' name, we're going to pray. We're not going to faint. We're going to fall out because you know what? We're going to reap in due season if we faint not. Amen? Amen. And so gather your family together. Gather your loved ones in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Gather them around. Cut all of the other stuff off the radio, the TV, the video game. Cut all of that off. Amen. And we're going to go before the Lord with the word of prayer. There is a lot to pray for. There's a lot for us to pray for this morning in Jesus' name. We want to pray particularly for the families that have lost loved ones in, in, the, in the face of COVID-19. Uh, we want to pray in Jesus' name for all of those that haven't been able to grieve properly, not being able to go uh, to funerals and not be able to pay our last respects to the people that we love so dearly. So we want to pray for them in a special way in Jesus. And we want to pray also uh, for uh, the, those that are on the front line, uh, those nurses and those doctors and those people that are going in harm's way in order to allow us to live in Jesus' name. We want to pray for our government. We want to pray for our leaders that they would have wisdom in Jesus' name in the decisions that they make, that the decisions wouldn't be pushed by economics or just by money, but they would consider the, uh, the sanctity of life. So we want to pray for them in Jesus' name. We want to pray for the nation. We want to pray for the world. We want to pray for China, for Italy, for Spain, for Africa. We want to pray for all the nations, all the countries around the world that have been affected, amen, by uh, uh, this pandemic in Jesus' name. Uh, we, we want to pray, amen, for our elderly, those that are uh, uh, um, in harm's way, those that have underlying conditions and those that have challenges in, in Jesus' name. We want to pray with them that the Lord would just touch them in a special way uh, in Jesus' name. And, and you know the scripture that if my people who are called by my name, amen, God is calling for us to pray. God is calling for the church to pray. So right now, in Jesus' name, let's clear our hearts. Let's clear our minds in Jesus' name. And we're going to go before the Lord in a word of prayer. We're praying for leaders and for pastors that are speaking this morning. Amen. We're praying in Jesus' name that the word of God will go forward with power and demonstration of his spirit in Jesus' name. So right now in Jesus' name, as we, amen, come before you, bow your heads, lift your hands to amen, point this way, reach, stretch your hands out, believe with us in Jesus' name right now that we're getting ready to move in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, God, first of all, we say thank you. Somebody give him praise. You. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you for your goodness. We say thank you for your glory. We thank you for your power, for your strength, for your mercy, for your love, for your grace. We thank you for each and everything that you've done. We thank you for allowing us 
to be in the land of the living just another day. We thank you in Jesus' name for a reasonable portion of, of health and strength. We thank you for a mind, God, to serve you, a mind to know you, a mind to worship you, a mind to magnify you in Jesus' name. And this morning, oh God, as we come, God, there's a lot of things that's on our heart that we need to pray over, God. There's a lot of things that's on our heart, hallelujah, that concern us this morning in Jesus' name. But God, we understand that you know what we have need of even before we ask. We also recognize that you are sovereign, God. Hallelujah. So God, right now, in the name of Jesus, as we make our requests known and as we come before you this morning, we ask you to meet us, oh God. At the point of our need, we ask you to meet us, oh God, at the point of our brokenness, at the point of our emptiness, oh God. And we ask you, God, in Jesus' name, that you would be a present help. We ask you that you would minister to each and every one of these needs that we spoke about. We ask you in Jesus' name that, God, you stretch out your hand and you touch those families, oh God, that are bereaved this morning, those that have lost loved ones, God, those, oh God, that are overwhelmed, oh God, by what's going on. We pray, God, that they would be led to a rock that is higher than them. We pray, oh God, today, in Jesus' name, God, hallelujah, that you would just touch the doctors and the nurses and those that are on the front line, those that are putting themselves in harm's way in order that the rest of us might enjoy life, oh God. Father, we pray for those doctors. We pray for those nurses. We pray strength for them. We pray stamina for them. We pray glory over them now, God, in the wonderful name of Jesus. And oh God, right now, in Jesus' name, we lift up, hallelujah, our leaders, God. We lift up our president. We lift up the prime ministers around the world. We lift up kings and those in authority, God. We pray, God, right now that your hand would touch them, that your hand would strengthen them, that they would come to a place of wisdom and understanding and know that you, God, right now are the answer, God. So God, right now, we look to you. God, we believe you. God, we trust in you right now in Jesus' name. And God, right now, somebody bind it right now with me. We bind everything that's not like you. We bind everything that would hinder, everything that would stop us, everything that would come to impede our progress in you. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we lose praise in the atmosphere. We lose praise in our house. We lose praise in the living room. We lose praise, oh God, in the bedroom. We lose praise in the family room. We believe you, God, right now that where the spirit of the Lord is, that there is liberty, oh God. So God, right now, we give you the praise that you deserve. We give you the glory that you deserve. We give you the honor that you deserve in the wonderful name of Jesus. Somebody clap your hands and just give God a praise. Come on, somebody give God a praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We want to set the atmosphere. We want to set the amen, make it conducive for the spirit of God to move, for the glory of God to be revealed in Jesus' name. Oh, somebody lift up your voice. Hallelujah. And shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 God deserves to be magnified. God deserves to be honored this morning. Oh, you got a lot to you got a lot to praise God for. Just look at how good he's been to you. In the middle of crisis, God is good. In the middle of crisis, God is worthy to be praised. David said, I bless him at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. 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 We bless God this morning in Jesus name. We bless God. I, I do want to take this time uh, to say thank you for welcoming us into your home in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you for this privilege and for this opportunity. I know that there's a lot of other things that you can be doing, a lot of other preachers possibly that you could be looking at and listening to, but we thank God for welcoming us into your home, and I want to thank you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. We don't take it for granted, amen, that you've allowed us this privilege, amen, to be able to speak a word unto you in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We bless the Lord this morning. We thank the Lord. Hallelujah for Sister Bell. Uh, Sister Bell is, is, is uh, being an help meet right now in Jesus' name. So she's working things behind the scenes, but we bless the Lord for it. We thank the Lord for it in Jesus' name. And to just all the saints of God, we praise the Lord for you because God has been good to us. God has been awesome to us in Jesus' name. And so 
this morning. I'm not uh, going to uh, weary your patience this morning in Jesus' name. And, and this morning, I want to share a word with you. Um, and I'm not going to be very deep this morning. I'm not going to be very philosophical, not even going to try to be revelatory or, or anything like that. The Lord dropped something very practical, something very simple on my heart this morning because uh, a lot of us are about to go stir crazy. Amen. And, and because we've been locked up in the house and we haven't been able to uh, fellowship and socialize and do the things that we like to do in Jesus' name. And, and you know, we are made to, to socialize. We are made for fellowship. Think about this. Even the Lord said uh, uh, in Genesis, he said, it's not good for a man to be alone. So he understood that there's an element of man, there's a part of man that relates to socialization and we need socialization. And so I know that we are isolated and we can't do what we would typically do. And so this morning, I just want to speak to your heart. I want to speak to your mind. I want to speak to your soul. I want to speak to your psyche in Jesus' name so you can keep it together, so you can keep it together, so that you won't lose it, so that you don't have a meltdown in Jesus' name. Amen. It is not God's desire for you to lose it in this hour. God is just trying to draw us closer. He's trying to get more intimate with us in Jesus' name. So we're going to utilize that time this morning in Jesus' name. And so those of you, grab your Bibles and we're going to go into the Word of God. Grab your Bibles, get your Bibles in Jesus' name, and we are going to go to uh, the book of Psalms, very simple Psalms, and, and we're going to be in the book of Psalms quite a bit this morning in Jesus' name. The book of Psalms, and we're going to look at the 137th division of the book of Psalms, and we are going to look at verses 1 through 4, Psalms 137, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 4. And it reads as thus, it says, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. It said, we hang our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth. Saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Verse 4 says, how shall we sing the Lord's song? in a strange land. And this morning, I want to minister to you a simple thought. Somebody just say, keep singing. Oh, glory to God. If you're going to keep singing, clap your hands and give God a praise. If you're going to keep worshiping, clap your hands and give God the glory that he deserves. Tell somebody next to you, keep singing. Amen. Come on. Tell somebody in the next room, keep singing. Amen. Tell somebody sitting on the couch to keep singing. Don't, don't lose your joy. Don't give up your hope right now. Don't give up on God because God is not finished yet. Just keep singing. So this morning... As I said, I just want to try to encourage someone to keep singing. I want to encourage someone to keep their eyes on the prize, to keep looking to the hills from which is coming your help. Amen? As we begin to look at the Psalms, we begin to understand something. This is a psalm that catalogs the mindset of the children of Israel when they were taken away captive into Babylon. And, and oftentimes, you've heard the cliche that we don't miss the water till the well runs dry. Oftentimes, we don't appreciate certain things until they are not available to us anymore. I, I'm, I'm thinking uh, of the scripture, and I'm going to jump a fence uh, the scripture says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, Psalms 122. But right now, we can't quote that scripture because we can't go into the house of the Lord. 
We're, 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 we're confined, amen, to the walls of, of our boat, to our houses. We're, we're confined to a space and we can't go to the house of the Lord. Oh, but somebody give God a praise because even though I can't go into the house of the Lord, that don't mean that I can't have church. That don't mean that I can't open the sanctuary up. That does not mean that I can't give God glory right now where I stand. Somebody just lift your hands and let the devil know, hallelujah, that even though I can't go into the house of God, that I can give God praise right here in this living room. I can give God glory right here in this family room. I can give God praise right where I'm standing at. Hallelujah. God deserves praise. God deserves glory because guess what? Guess what? Those of us who are truly born again, we come to understand, amen, amen, that the kingdom of God is within. We come to understand that even when we can't make it to the sanctuary, we still know how to bless and praise our God because we understand that the sanctuary is not made out of brick and mortars, but the sanctuary is in my heart. Amen. No wonder Jesus said that the kingdom of God is within. So somebody give God a praise if you got a sanctuary in your heart. But as they begin to uh, uh, reminisce, they started to get heavy. And I, and I want to tell somebody, I know that all of us are mentally being bombarded and we're asking a question, when is this going to be over? We're asking the question, when will we be able to go back to normalcy? Let me let you in on something. We're going to have some new norms. It ain't never going to be the way that it was. We're going to have to live in a new normal. And, 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 and sometimes this question of when and what and how, it plagues our mind. It begins to play on us and, and we become bombarded and we get to the point, amen, where, where, where we're overthinking and we're analyzing and we're trying to come to a conclusion on this and a conclusion on that. And the truth of the matter is, is that instead of trying to draw a conclusion, we just need to trust God. We need to let God be God because he is the one that knows the end from the beginning. He is the one that understands how we come out on this. And somebody right now, I want to encourage you. You ought not to wait till the battle is over. You ought to give God praise right now because God is going to bless you. God is going to bring you through. You just got to keep singing for right now. You just got to keep your joy for right now. So, as we begin to look at this Psalms 137, it said by the rivers of Babylon, they had been taken captive and they were taken away from their homeland and they could no longer go to the temple and they could no longer just worship freely the way they wanted to. They were in a strange land that was full of strange gods. And when they were there, they begin to remember Zion. They begin to remember how God had blessed them and how God had brought them out. And they begin to make their hearts saddened. And oftentimes, right now, we may have taken for granted that hug from a sister or that, that pat on the back from a brother. And, and we may have taken for granted that fellowship that we used to have in the sanctuary. And sometimes it can weigh on your heart. But I want you to know, we may not be together, but we're giving God praise together right now. And, and I want to tell you this. Somebody said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. God is worthy to be praised. God is worthy to be exalted. God deserves the glory, the honor. Hallelujah. He deserves our worship. So as I begin to take this and look at it, it said we wept. When we remembered Zion, and it said, we hang our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. And I want to tell somebody this morning, this ain't no time for you to put your harp down. This ain't no time for you to give up your joy. This ain't no time for you to stop 
giving God praise. When you say, Pastor, I'm, I'm locked up. You say, well, Pastor, I, I can't go outside. Pastor, I can't do this and I can't do that. But look at all the things you can do. Oh, my God. You got rooms you can go in. You got TVs on all the wall. You got food in your refrigerator. Amen. You got heat in your house. Amen. You got lights that you can cut on. You got a whole lot of reasons that you can give God praise. And it ain't the time to stop singing right now. Somebody ought to bless the Lord even while we saying it now. Somebody ought to give God glory because you realize that in the middle of this that God has been good to you. Don't you know that it don't have to be like it is right now? You could be in a soup kitchen. You could be in a line waiting on a box of food. Amen. You could be outdoors under a bridge hoping and praying that somebody would have compassion on you. But God has been good to you and you need to give God God pray. You need to give God the glory. You need to give God the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And make up your mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. That I'm not going to put my heart on the willow tree. That's a metaphor. You know, a willow tree denotes sadness. A willow tree indicates heaviness. A willow tree, amen, oftentimes relates to uh, anxiety. Uh, but God, right now, we are not going to put our hearts on that willow tree. We ain't going to take what God gave us and lay it down just because we're going through. We learned the other day that patience has got to have this perfect work. We found out, amen, that patience, well, amen, work of tribulation and tribulation, work of experience and experience hope. Ah, God, you know we got to go through some time in order to get to the place where God wants us to get through. But while you going through, don't forget to sing a song. Ah, my God, you say, well, pastor, what song should I sing? Somebody ought to sing, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Somebody ought to start singing that I know that the Lord is going to make a way somehow. Somebody ought to start singing, hallelujah, that if he did it before, that he'll do it again. Somebody clap your hands and give the Lord a praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You can't lay your heart down. You, you, we said this before, but now you got to stand on it. You said that the joy that I had, that the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. So this morning, you need to make up your mind. You remember how God put joy in your soul when nobody else was around. You need to remember where it bought you from when you was down in the muck and the mire clay, and how he picked you up and turned you you around and brought you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Our God, you really remember how when you was broken, naked, and hungry, and empty, and homeless, how it was him that came in your dark pit and opened the door and let you come out of your prison. Our God, so you don't need to stop singing. You don't need to stop glorifying God. Our God, you said, well, pastor, I ain't got nothing to bless him for. As one song says, hallelujah, in Anyhow, you got to learn how to give God praise. Hallelujah. When it seemed like he ain't doing nothing. You got to learn how to sing. Hallelujah. When it seemed like God ain't moving for you. I want to tell you to keep singing this morning. He said we hung our harps on the willows in the midst of it. And then it got deeper. It said for they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us murder. Can I tell you sometimes you need to sing when you ain't got nothing to sing about. Oh, well, Pastor, why, why would you say something like that? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. You need to sing until you can feel joy. You need to sing until your spirit turns. It's something about singing that allows certain chemicals to be released into your spirit. It changes your mindset. It changes your disposition. It changes how you see things. Sometimes you just need to sing. And you can make up a song. It, it ain't even got to be an orthodox song. Can't nobody see you anyway. You might as well make up a song. <laughs> Some songs we sing. They don't make no sense, but they don't have to make sense. They make us feel good. I'm reminded uh, of a song that Pharrell Williams made a couple years ago. 
And I, you say, well, Pastor Pharrell Williams, I, I want you to grab something. He made a song called Because I'm Happy. He said, you know what he said, come along and sing with me if happiness is the truth. He said, sing if you're happy like a room without a roof, which means that you're not boxed in. That your happiness, amen, is not boxed in. And then he said, come along if you're happy, just sing it. Just come along. And, and you know, if you look at the video, they're all on the video, people, all kind of people. They just sing it and they're just happy because it's something about singing that changes your disposition. And Pharrell said, if you're happy, come along with me. And I'm going to tell you something, while we're in this house and we're thinking and we're trying to figure out all these things and we're trying to analyze what we need to do and how we're going to come out, you need to do what the Apostle Paul said in the book of Acts when he told the king, he said, I think myself happy. So instead of sitting back and saying, woe is me and, and I'm locked up, you need to think about when God opened the door and when he bring you out. You need to think about how you're going to praise him when you get to be able to be in the sanctuary again. You need to think about how you're going to bless him. Hallelujah. Because everybody around you is losing jobs and you're still working. Amen. You need to give God praise because people are going through. And why it look like people are going through, look like he's blessing you on every side. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this house. Did anybody get a check in the mail this week? Did anybody go in the mailbox and check that they made an account and their account was higher than it was? Did anybody watch God work on your behalf? You got a reason to sing. You got a reason to give God joy. So, you can't put your harp on the willow tree right now. You cannot let this moment consume you. You got to make up your mind that I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. And his praise is going to continually be in my mouth. Let me share something else with you. Amen. So they had been taken away captive. They were in Babylon. Amen. They was under the hands of taskmasters. They hung their harps on the willows. But can I tell you this? Another song say, trouble don't last always. Can I tell you that God is going to bring us out of this? And when God bring us out, we're going to be better than we was when we went in. Hallelujah. So Psalms, amen, 126. The scripture says clearly in Psalms 126. Still talking about the children of Israel. But now listen to what they're saying. It said, when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, those that were in bondage. He says, we were like them that dreamed. Can I tell you when God bring us out and bless some of us, we're going to have to pinch ourselves because we're going to have to see whether or not we dream it or not. That's how good it's going to be. See, it may not get better for the world, but can I tell you that God is going to bless his people? It may not get better for the world, but can I tell you, for the blood-washed believer, for the born-again believer, that God is going to work a work and that we're going to come out on top? We are his elect. We are the salt of the earth. We are a city that's on the hill. Amen? We are the light of the world. Hallelujah. And God ain't going to let our light go out in this dark time. Our light is going to get brighter. Hallelujah. When sin does abound, hallelujah, grace does much more. Abound. So he says in Psalms 1 and 26, he said that when the Lord returned the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to pinch myself. He says, then was our mouth filled with laughter. Oh my God, hallelujah. I remember a song said, come let us sing. Come let us rejoice. It says the Messiah is coming. He brought life and he brought laughter to our soul. It would have been enough if he bought peace. It would have been enough if he bought joy. But somebody say he bought laughter to our soul. Not only that, the song continues and said, now they laugh at the devil. Ha, 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 ha. Somebody need to laugh at the devil and let the devil know that you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Somebody need to laugh at the devil and let him know that I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Somebody need to laugh at the devil and let him know that God has put you under my feet. I got power to tread over all the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. 
He says, and then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord have done great things for them. For the Lord have done great things for us whereof we are glad. Somebody ought to be glad about how good God has been to them. Somebody ought to be glad about where God has brought you from. And so here again, here again, here again, we, we, I'm just trying to share with you, amen, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, don't lose your joy in this hour. Don't hang your harp on the willow tree. Don't give up on God. You got to keep singing. Can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? Amen. Amen. Professional athletes. Amen. They got a song that they play to get them hyped up before the game. Professional athletes, they got a song that they play. It gets in their psyche and it gets them running emotional. And they feel like, oh my God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to dunk on you. I'm going to slam on you. I'm going to run in the end zone. And they playing that song over in their head. You need to get your song, your war song, your battle cry. You need to get your song, whatever that song is. You need to let, let it play in your head. What is the song you ought to sing? You ought to sing, I'm going to the enemy's camp to take back what he took from me. You ought to sing that I'm going to the enemy's camp and I'm going to recover all that he stole from me. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. And don't, 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 don't complain in your song. Amen. There's another song that said I won't complain that when I look around and I think things over, that all of my good days outweigh my bad days and that I won't complain. Hallelujah. I, I'm not going to complain. Hallelujah. When I got popsicles in the freezer. I'm not going to complain when I got lemonade, amen, in the refrigerator. I'm not going to complain when I got chips and popcorn and all kind of snacks, amen, around me. I got too much to bless God for because if it was the other way around, I would be the one in the soup kitchen. I would be the one, amen, in the line trying to get a box of food. But God has been too good for me to complain. Hallelujah. So let's take it a little bit further. Ah, God, let's, let's, let's go to uh, Psalms 147. Very simple, I told you. Nothing deep, amen. Nothing deep, nothing heavy this morning. We're going to look at Psalms 147. Hallelujah. And we're going to look at the first verse, amen. We're going we're gonna to look at what thus said the Lord. And here again, God just wants somebody to keep giving him praise. God wants somebody to keep giving him glory in Jesus' name. Can I tell you this? Sometime, hallelujah, you got to bless the Lord on credit, amen. You, you can't wait till the battle over. You got to shout before it happen. Amen. All right. Psalms 147 verse number one. It says, praise you the Lord for it is a good thing to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant and praise is coming. It's just something about when you start singing, you start to feel good. Next thing you know, your fingers start snapping. Before you know it, your hands is clapping. Before you know it, your hands is up. You ain't worried about who's looking at you because all you know is God has been good to you and you need a little room to shout. Hallelujah, you need a little room to give him praise. So he tells us to. it's a good thing for us to give praise to God. It's comely. It's acceptable. It's the thing to do. We're going to take it a little bit further. And, and, and so while you are singing and while you are blessing God, amen, amen. Psalms 149 and 1 tells us something, and I'm almost finished. Psalms 149 and 1 tells us something that uh, we ought to praise ye the Lord and we ought to sing unto the Lord a new song. Amen. Maybe that old song done got old. Maybe that old praise done got old. You need to make up a new song right now in Jesus' name. There's new circumstances. There's new surroundings. There's new elements. Amen. There's new mercy. There's new grace. It's a new day. So God deserves a new praise. You ought to give God praise this morning in Jesus' name. Make up a song about how he delivered you from Corona. Make up a song how he covered your house. How it didn't come now your door. Make up a song, amen, and let the Lord know that I love you and I won't complain that I'm going to bless you no matter where I find myself at. I'm going to keep on singing. Hallelujah. And let me take you here in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. As we take it further, you think that giving God praise is something that's strictly found in the Old Testament, but it's not. 
See, God desires the crowning element of his creation to give praise to him. Have you ever noticed birds never stop singing? Hallelujah. Be a storm coming. They might quiet down for a minute, but once they get to their nest, they're going to sing. Amen. First thing in the morning, sometime before you open your eyes, you can hear birds singing because they have sense. They know that God deserves praise. You know what? And they are not worried. And somebody that's worried right now, uh, let me bring you in. Are you not worth more than many sparrows? Don't you know what the Bible said? That consider the fowls of the air. They don't toil, they don't labor, they don't gather, but their heavenly father provides for them every day. Hallelujah. All they doing is sitting on the wire singing. Hallelujah. Well, I got a feeling everything going. And they just twitching and singing. And next thing you know, he got a worm in his mouth. Next thing you know, he eating a twig. Next thing you know, amen, he got a cracker that you threw out the window. And you thought you was littering, but God said, throw it out so I can feed the birds. And God is going to feed you. God is going to take care of you. You just got to keep singing. Hallelujah. So let's go to the book of Ephesians. And we're going to go to chapter 5. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. And this is a New Testament concept. It's a New Testament concept as well. Ephesians chapter 5. Hallelujah. And we're going to look at the 19th through the 20th verse. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. Let me get there in Jesus' name because I want to make sure that I'm reading the word of God correctly. In Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 5. And look at what the 19th verse says. It says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart unto the Lord. Amen? So Paul, the apostle writer, even though he got deep and he told us about the one God and one faith and one baptism, he's, he's prayed that our spirit be enlightened, that we come to knowledge and revelation and the understanding of him. He, he, he tells us a, a lot of deep things about the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, uh, but he becomes very practical and he lets us to understand that we need to speak to ourselves in psalms and in hymns and in spiritual songs and we need to make melody to the Lord in our hearts. Hallelujah. And, and not only that, let me interject this. Hallelujah. You need to sing with an understanding. You need to sing according to, amen, the book of Corinthians with an understanding. Amen. Because when you sing with an understanding, that's when the power comes down. When you sing with an understanding, that's when the glory is revealed. Because then you, you recognize that this is more than words that I'm singing. You recognize that it's more than a melody. You realize, hallelujah, that what you're singing is a reality. Amen. You realize that what you're singing is giving God glory, praise, and honor. That's why you can't put your heart down. That's why you can't stop singing. Your kids need to see you singing. Your husband need to hear you sing. Your wife need to hear you give God glory. Your house need to hear you lifting up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know that if God's name be lifted up, hallelujah, he'll draw people. Hallelujah. He'll draw them. Hallelujah. In the midst of anxiety, he'll draw. In the middle of confusion, he'll draw. In the middle of a pandemic, he'll draw them if the church keep on singing. Hallelujah. I want to tell the church, we can't act like the world has. We got to know, hallelujah, that there's a song in our heart that the angels cannot sing, that we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, that we've been redeemed. Hallelujah. And somebody said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who's he redeemed? Not the hand of the enemy. I don't know about you, but I can't stop singing about the day that he brought me out. I can't stop singing about the day that he made, he made a way. I can't stop singing about the day that he opened my prison doors and allowed me to go free. Hallelujah. And that song that I started singing 30 some years ago is getting better every day. Somebody say every day with Jesus gets sweeter than the day before. Oh God, somebody clap their hands and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Singing unto the Lord, making melodies in your heart. He said, giving thanks, verse 20. He says, giving thanks always. 
for all things. Hallelujah. And somebody else said in Thessalonians, give thanks in all things for this is the will of God concerning you. God knows what he's doing. God has you under control. You are in his thoughts. Listen to what he said. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, and to bring you to an expected end. Hallelujah. God is escorting you right now. God got you covered. God got all of us covered in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm going to say this right now. My better days are in front of me. My latter days are behind me. Hallelujah. And the glory in this latter house is going to be greater than the glory in the former house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God knows what he's doing. He's bringing you to a certain place. And, and not only does Paul say it, but it's also said in the book of Colossians chapter 3. Amen. Verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 15. Amen. Let's look at what Colossians said. Amen. He backs up what Paul said is that you got to keep singing. You got to keep giving God glory. Hallelujah. And I want to say this to you. In Jesus' name. One of the reasons that you got to keep singing and, and, and one of the things you got to do to keep singing is you got to cut off all the TV sometimes. Sometimes you got to cut off CNN. Sometimes you got to stop looking at Twitter and what's being tweeted. You got to stop, amen, checking all of the social stuff. Sometimes, amen, you just got to let your mind be renewed. See what's happening right now. The reason the world is getting to a sad place because we are bombarded with negative news. We're bombarded bombarded daily. We're bombarded hourly. We're, we're bombarded updated minute by minute. These many people done died. These many people have it. These many people are going through and it's just bogging our minds down. But the Bible said that we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We need to allow God's word to get down in our mind. We need to allow God's word amen, to transform us. To let us go through a mental metamorphosis. A spiritual metamorphosis to the degree that I'm no longer looking at Corona. I'm looking at the glory of God. I'm no longer looking at my circumstances. I'm looking at my eternally heavenly home. I'm no longer bombarded hey man, with what's going on in New York and Detroit and Florida. But now my eyes are looking at the streets of gold. Now, hey amen, I'm looking at the throne and I'm looking at him hey amen, which was and which is and which is to come. I'm looking at the Alpha and Omega and when I look at him, I can't help Help but sing. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 through 17. And, and this is where we got to get this. Because when you, when you stop singing, when you stop playing, when you stop worshiping, you give up an element of your peace. Because it is in worship, it, it is in singing, it is in melody, it is in thanksgiving, hallelujah, that I recognize that the peace of God, how, can, how is it that you can sing about being happy and your feet don't start moving? How is it that you can sing about being free and your hands don't go up? How is it that you can sing, hallelujah, about the Lord and it don't move you? Sometimes I sing and I end up on the floor. Hallelujah. Didn't nobody push me down. Didn't nobody, amen, trip me. It's just that when I sung and I recognized that I was in front of a king, I had to bow before him. Hallelujah. And somebody need to sing until you bow. Sing until you fall on your knees and let your mascara run. You probably ain't got on none anyway. You in the house by yourself. Let God have his way. Hallelujah. But I want you to tap into something. Colossians 3.15. It says, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. Hold on to your peace. The peace of God, the past understanding. What do you mean past understanding? There is no way that I ought to have peace, but I got it. All the circumstances say that I shouldn't be okay psychologically, but I am okay psychologically. Why am I okay psychologically? Because I got on the helmet of salvation. Hallelujah. I'm going to let God keep my mind. I ain't going to lose it. I'm not going to have a breakdown. Hey, amen. I'm not going to worry about everything. I'm going to trust God. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called. Don't you know you've been called to peace? God has not called you to foolishness. He's not called you to war. He's not called you to quarrels, to anger. He has called you to peace. He says, for you are called in one body and be thankful. Now, 
He says, be thankful. And then he says, and this is where the substance comes in at. Because I got something to sing about. He says, let the word of Christ dwell, tabernacle, live in you. Not just live in you, richly. Hallelujah. With what? In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Here it is in Psalms, in hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts unto the Lord. Amen. All the word that you've learned in Bible class. All the word that you've learned, amen, in Sunday school. All the word that you set at your table and read. Let that word dwell in you richly now. So that as that word dwells, wisdom dwells in you. Peace dwells in you. But a song comes out of your heart. And you begin to make melody unto the Lord. Hallelujah. It ain't even got to be a bunch of words. You can say hallelujah and fall out in the flood. Because hallelujah will bring tears to your eyes. When you think about how good he's been to you and where he's brought you from. Hallelujah. Let it be in your heart and sing with grace unto the Lord. And verse 17 said, and whatever you do, in word and deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Do it all in the name of the Lord. Giving thanks unto our God and to the Father by him. Hallelujah. I want to share one more verse with you now. You've said something. You've said, Pastor, I need to sing. I, I need to sing and I need to keep my praise up and I need to keep worshiping. But can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? Can I tell you that you can't sing too long to God and he don't start singing back to you? You can't sing too long to God and he don't start getting involved. Somebody said when praises go up, that blessings come down. See, as you begin to praise God, as you begin to worship God, God starts patting his foot. God starts clapping his hands. God gets excited. And when God gets excited, angels start moving. When God gets excited, how am I God, galaxies come together. When God gets excited, hallelujah, he begins to pour out glory. And, and guess what? He's so high that the only place he can pour is low. So when he begins to pour, it's coming to you. When he begins to pour, it's coming to your heart. So you ought to sing until the point that God starts singing. You ought to sing to the point that God starts singing back. And oh, pastor, you say, oh, you just making that up. No, no, no. But if you go to, hey man, the book of Zephaniah chapter number three. The Bible begins to tell us that as God began to look at Israel, when God began to look at his chosen people and they had been dispersed and they had been in bondage and they had been in different places, how they'd been through the fire, they'd been through the flood, they'd been through the water. Hallelujah. And some of us, we've been through a whole lot of stuff. Hallelujah. But can I tell you this? Oh my God, that God has been with you in everything that you've been through. He's been with you through the fire. He'd been with you through the flood. Hallelujah. When you thought it was over yourself, it was him that held you up. How he showed himself. Hallelujah. As faithful. Hallelujah. He's been with you through everything. He said, I'll never leave you. He said, I'll never forsake you. But I'll be with you always, even unto the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. And so now, ah, God, as the tables begin to turn, can I tell you this? That when this is over, you're going to hear God singing, and you're going to see the glory of God be revealed in your life like you've never seen it before. When this is over and God start to sing, ah, God, God is going to sing until blessing overtake you. God is going to sing until the miraculous show up in your house. God is going to sing until the devil have to back up and move out the way. Hallelujah. When God starts to sing, there's nothing that can stop him from pouring out his blessing, his glory, and his honor. And I want to tell you that God is getting ready to join in and sing with you. That's why the Bible tells us in Zephaniah chapter number three. Ah, oh my God. And somebody ought to get ready to shout because the Bible said, hallelujah, 3 and 17, that the Lord thy God is in the midst of thee and he is mighty. Ah, God, somebody, that's enough to shout right there. Just knowing that God 
is with you. Just knowing that God ain't left you. Just knowing, hallelujah, that you're never alone. Somebody said that if the Lord be for you, that who can be against you? Hallelujah. When God is on your side, there is no demon, no devil. Hallelujah. No man, no woman. There is no person that can stop God from blessing you when God get ready to bless you. And I want to tell you, God is clearing his voice because he's getting ready to start singing over you. Hallelujah. The Bible says this, the Lord thy God is mighty in the midst of thee. He will save. Hallelujah. And his name is salvation. It says he will save and he will rejoice over thee with joy. Can I tell you God gets joy when he can rejoice over his people? Can I tell you that God gets joy, God gets pleasure in blessing his saints? God want to bless you. God want to bring you out. God want to increase you. God want to enlarge your border. The reason being here, when he does it, you give him maximum praise. You give him maximum glory. Oh my God, somebody gonna need some room when we get back in the sanctuary because we gonna tear it down. Somebody gonna need some room when we get back in the sanctuary because we gonna give God glory and we gonna be like David, hallelujah. You remember David shouted out of his clothes? You remember David danced before the Lord with all his might, hallelujah. And his wife, Micah, got upset at him and said, how glorious were you today when you uncovered yourself in the face of the daughters of Israel. But David said, Said, listen, sister. He said it was unto the Lord. He said, You think that was something? Hallelujah. The next time I'm gonna be more based than that. I'm gonna shout in your faith. I'm gonna give God glory for what he's done. He continues in Zephaniah 3 and 17, says, He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Amen. I want to tell somebody, keep singing, because God is getting ready to sing back. I want to tell somebody, keep singing, because God is getting ready to give, amen, you a breakthrough like you've never had before. In the middle of your song, God is going to show up. And you know what happened? Listen to this. Listen to this. You know, God sings bass. God sings bass. And bass is omnidirectional. Amen. Just like God is in every place, bass is omnidirectional. How, that's why you can put a subwoofer in the trunk. You can put it in the back seat. You can put it under the hood. It's still going to give you what it needs because it's omnidirectional. Bass is like God. God sings bass. And I want to tell somebody that's bound right now. I want to tell somebody who's locked up, somebody, amen, that don't have freedom, that God is getting ready to come into your prison and sing. Do you remember when Paul and Silas was in the prison and the Bible said that at midnight they begin to sing praises? Hallelujah. And as they begin to sing praises, this is bell theology now, as they begin to sing praises, God begin to sing with them. And the Bible said and suddenly there was an earthquake. And in the middle of the earthquake, all of the foundation of the prison doors was loose and all the doors became open because God started singing breaks and started the earth to rumble and started the prison doors to shake. Those doors got open and they all came out and they begin to give God praise and glory. I want to tell somebody that's been in a dark place that God is getting ready to shake your place. I want to tell somebody that's been overwhelmed and hallelujah, you don't know which way to turn or what to do, that God is getting ready to sing over you. I want to tell somebody that's been worried, hallelujah, you, you ain't got to worry no more. I believe, amen, it was the Winans and Anita Beaker that said it ain't no need to worry what the night is going to bring because it's going to be all over in the morning. God is getting ready to sing in your life. Hallelujah. We love you this morning. We bless you this morning. Tell somebody, don't put your harp on the willow tree. Keep singing. Keep singing. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Listen, this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We want to believe God. We want to believe God for prayer. We want to believe God in Jesus' name. And, and I just I just pray that somebody's heart and somebody's mind and somebody's soul has been encouraged. I, I, listen, this morning in Jesus' name, I want you to know in Jesus' name that you're not alone. You're not alone. Amen. You're not alone if you're feeling uh, anxiety, if you're feeling worry, if you're feeling certain things. You're not alone in Jesus' name. We all deal with it, but we ain't going to stay there. 
Hallelujah. We're going to allow the peace of God that, that, that rules our hearts and our minds. We're going to allow ourselves to be kept by that peace. We're going to allow the peace of God, that passive understanding, amen, to be part of our psyche in Jesus' name. We're not going to be overwhelmed like the world is overwhelmed. We're going to allow God to renew our mind so that we keep singing, that we keep giving God praise. I'm just waiting on God to start singing. And when God starts singing, blessings overtake you. When God starts singing, he opens doors. Increase comes to your house. Promotion comes to your house. When God starts singing, he opens doors. And can I tell you this? When God starts singing, his people laugh in the face of famine. When God starts singing, he make a way out of, in the middle of nowhere at all. When God starts singing, hallelujah. So I encourage you this morning in Jesus' name. Lift your hands in Jesus' name. And we're going to have a word of prayer <clears throat> in Jesus' name. We're going to have a word of prayer in Jesus' name. And, and right now, we're praying, we're praying. I'm praying for all of the obvious things. But we're just believing God. And the Bible says this very simply, that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Can I tell you this? I know my prayer works. I know God hears my prayer. I know God hears your prayer. If you're living the life that you need to live, if you're, if you're being that servant that you need to be, amen, you can have confidence that when you pray, he hears you. You can have confidence that you have those things that you request of him. So this morning, in Jesus' name, we're going to touch and agree again in Jesus' name. We're touching and agreeing for your family. We're touching and agreeing for your breakthrough. We're touching and agreeing that God continues to keep you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, right now, my prayer is, Lord, just keep me until this is over. My prayer is just keep me until this passes by. Amen. I'm going to stay under the shadow of his wings. I'm going to stay in the place that I need to stay at. So that until he finishes doing what he's doing, that I'm in a secret place, that I'm in a safe place. Amen. <clears throat> we love you this morning. Lift those hands in Jesus' name. Lift those hands. Bow that head. Stretch out your hand. I'm touching the green with you in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Listen to this. We may not be f able to physically touch, but our spirits are touching each other. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're, we're going down Mount View Road. Everybody that live on Mount View Dickerson Road, amen. Everybody that live in Hermitage, everybody that live in the surrounding Nashville area that's tuned in, I'm touching and agreeing with you right now. Can I tell you this, that the hand of the Lord is not short that he cannot save. His ear is not heavy that he cannot hear. God hears you. God sees you. God knows where you are. So now, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you this morning, God, we say thank you. Thank you for giving us insight. The insight not to put our harps on the willow trees. The insight for us not, God, to give in, God. And Father, this morning in Jesus' name, we thank you that there's a song in our heart that the angels cannot sing. We thank you in Jesus' name, hallelujah, for being a healer. We know that you are the balm that's in Gilead. So God, right now, we speak healing to everybody who needs healing, emotional healing, psychological healing, physical healing. God, over every mental disease, we speak healing to it now. And we believe you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We claim it. We claim it done. And God, we declare today that we're going to sing a new song to you. We declare today in Jesus' name that we're going to give you a new praise, God. Hallelujah, God. So God, right now, in Jesus' name, touch every heart, touch every mind, touch every soul. Minister to them as only you can. And Father, we lift up this crisis before you. We lift up the doctors, the nurses, the policemen, the firemen, the first responders. We lift up the clerks in the grocery store, at the gas station. We lift up, lift up all of those people that are working in those essential places, God, that cause us to be able to still enjoy life to a certain realm of normalcy. Father, we thank you today. We praise you. And I'm praying in Jesus' name that doctors around the world would begin to pray and seek your face. I'm praying in Jesus' name that they would begin to appeal to your sovereignty and to your knowledge, that you give them insight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we love you, and we do bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank the Lord for this privilege and this opportunity to be able to come and share with you today from the Word of God. 
Keep singing, keep singing, keep singing. We're going to ask you in Jesus' name that if you would like to be a blessing, amen, to Last Days Church in Jesus' name, hallelujah, uh, you can visit our website in, in Jesus' name, www.lastdayschurch.org. You can also go online to Givelify, download the application, do a search for Last Days Church. It'll come up and you'll be able to sow a seed, amen, into our ministry and give in Jesus' name. I want to tell you that this is good ground in Jesus' name. Man, and I'm, I'm, I'm preparing for enlargement. I'm preparing for God to move in a special way in Jesus' name. I'm preparing for God to do greater than what he's done already. So God bless you. Amen. Myself and Sister Bell, we certainly miss you guys. We certainly love you guys. And we thank God in Jesus' name that you're praying for us in Jesus' name. We need prayer as well. Pray for us. Pray for us as we pray for you. It's a reciprocation. It's a two-way street in Jesus' name. So pray for us. We love you. Hopefully we'll be able to, to uh, hug you in a little while. We'll be able to kiss you in a little while. Every one of you wants you to know that we love you dearly. We love you tremendously in Jesus' name. So God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. And we'll see you at the next go-round in Jesus' name.